Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. I'm your host Dale and today we're going to be doing a camper build out. Ty drove here from Oklahoma. He's got a brand new ARE camper on his Ford F-150 and we're going to build out a spot so that he'll have a spot for his bed that he can leave up or take down. We're going to make an additional spot in between the bed and the other side so that he could actually make it into a full size bed and then do a full cabinet build out on what I'm going to call the right hand side of his truck. It's actually the passenger side. Let's get to the video. Again, thanks for tuning in to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. In this video, we're going to be going real quickly through this build out. When Ty got here, he had already started the build out at home. At some point, the camper had a leak. It, it had the plywood that he had started originally using had gotten wet. Some of it had gotten moldy. We're going to be trying to salvage as much of that plywood as we can from the original build that he started so that it's not just a big waste of money. So in the initial part of this video, you can see we're unloading this truck. So in the initial part of this video, you can see that we're unloading his truck. He did have a box, like I said, that was originally designed to be part of the bed frame, if you will. So we're gonna disassemble that. We're gonna cut it down shorter. We're gonna lower the bed down quite a bit. Yeah, the actual height of the bed is gonna be roughly nine and a half inches and that's going to give us enough room to clear the wheel well on the truck bed and then you're still we're going to cut cubby holes out on the inner part of the frame so that you could still get to the back side of that wheel well for storage for miscellaneous stuff that you may not need all the time but you'd still have a good place to store that stuff that you don't need every time you're camping but it is nice to have in the vehicle maybe like the tire repair kits, a jack, that kind of stuff. We'll put it in the back on the opposite side of the bed and it'll be there if he needs it and if he doesn't need it, it's stowed out of the way. So initially, again, we're starting out with toward the bed frame apart. We're gonna be cutting it down to size. Like I say, it's nine and a half inches tall. The overall width of the bed is gonna be 25 and a half inches. The mattress that he has is just like the one that we used. It's a tri-fold memory foam mattress. I'll put a link in the description down below where you can get that on Amazon. It's a comfortable mattress. Me and Buster have slept on it numerous nights. That's what we got in our little utility trailer that we've been camping out of last year after the move. After we get the bedside framed out, we're gonna move over to the other side of the truck, which I'm gonna call the right-hand side, the passenger side of the truck. And that's gonna be level with the camper shell frame that's bolted to the top of the bed. That way it extends that shelf instead of it being 11 and a half inches it's closer to 13 and a half to 14 inches depending on where you're at inside looking at the base of the shelf at the camper. So it opens it up and makes it a little bit bigger, bigger storage area. Now on the right hand side we're going to be cutting this lumber down again it has a lot of rough cuts that had to be cut down because he couldn't haul a full eight foot sheet here. So he cut the pieces at six foot three roughly, which is roughly the measurement that we're gonna be using. So that way when you shut the tailgate, everything still fits inside and there's a little bit of a gap and a little bit of a space. Now for some quick tips on cutting out the holes so that they look like they're done at the factory. You're going to see us as we're working on the right hand side of Ty's bed. We're going to be using the jigsaw to cut the rough opening and then we're going to be building a temporary frame out of plywood. The, some of the scrap plywood that we used when we was cutting this material down to build his case for the cabinet as well as the case for the bed. The scrap that's left over, save it because we're going to be using it and then you'll see me. We're going to use double sided tape. We're going to smash it down to the actual plywood and then use a flush trim bit to go in and route it out really smooth. You're going to have a radius corner. That radius corner comes from the size of the trim bit that we were using. So that way when you're looking at the bed when it's totally done or when you're looking at the camper build out and it's done, the holes that are cut out are, are machined nicely that way and it looks like a CNC machine. This is all done handheld but we are using basically a router template with the scrap plywood that we're using. So that'll be kind of one of your pro tips for this video 
anytime that you're trying to square up something or make it look nice, you can go in and cut the majority of the access of the hole out with a jigsaw. It doesn't matter if it's straight or crooked, it doesn't matter. We're going to straighten it up in the end with a flush trim router bit. If you guys don't have a flush trim router bit, I'll put a link in the description down below where you can get one. It's a tool that we use quite regular on a lot of our build outs. You know we've been building a lot of cabinets and that flush trim router bit has a lot of uses and one of them is just like this. We're going to make those cutouts for the access points to the different shelves and the cubby holes if you will so that it just looks factory clean when it's done. Again, we're going to do the same process that we've done when we were building the bed. We're going to do a dry fit and make sure everything fits together. And then we're going to glue and screw it all together. We're going to and we're working on framing out the passenger side cabinet. This cabinet is built in basically two stages. You've got the centerpiece that we're going to be working on individually. That's going to go over the wheel well. We're going to have a floor in it, which is basically that same nine and a half inch height to clear the wheel well. And that way you don't have stuff falling down in that hole that you're not really going to have access to. Ty wanted a nice flat shelf there. That way he could store his buddy heater. It's a good place to store clothes. You could put almost a week's worth of clothes between five pair of jeans and t-shirts and socks and whatnot in there and not even have to carry a bag with clothes in it and then with it being inside the camper it's going to stay dry so there's a lot of added use use to the different cubby holes that we're making for storage there'll be room for um, there'll be room for all of us cooking stuff we did put an additional drawer on the bedside that drawer I purposely made it to where it will come all the way out that way if he wanted to carry it say he's got his silverware and all of his cook utensils in that one drawer, you could carry it to a picnic table if you got to a campground where they actually had a picnic tables, something like that. That way he could get his, his two burner stove, all of his cook equipment, carry it over there and it'd all be organized. And then again, after you do the cleanup, you can slide it right back in and it's got its own little storage space and it's a nice convenient carry case that way. The one thing I will note on the drawer is we did do the half blind dovetails. I wanted this drawer to hold up because we know that there's probably going to be a little bit of weight in it, plus the fact that you can carry it back and forth from the truck to a picnic table or the campsite or whatever, and you don't want to worry about it falling apart. So we did spend the extra time, put the half blind dovetails in the drawer so that it'd be a much more sturdy build when it's all said and done. Again, we'll do the same thing. We'll do a dry fit before we actually glue it all up. On these various phases of this camper build out, as we're waiting on glue to dry, we may start on another part of the project just to speed it up. Prior to Ty and I retiring together, he had wanted a jacket. So this trout that's going to be on the door, the drawer, so this trout that's on the drawer is the same trout patch that we made for his jacket. We made him several patches. He's got, I think, one on each arm and then one across the back and on the back of it, it's trout because Ty really enjoys the fly fishing and trout fishing and that's one of his biggest passions in life is just the, the trout fishing of the outdoors. So. With that said, he wanted the trout on his drawer and then he wanted our logo on the door. So we did that with the laser and you'll see that towards the end of the video where we've got those two different parts lasered out. Then we'll attach the drawer front to the drawer and then we've got the door attached with hinges. And I've kind of show a short clip. We did use the piano hinges on this build out uh, for the door. And then the drawer is actually just like an old timey drawer was built way before hardware is we've got hardwood runners in there so that the drawer will slide in and out nice and easy and then we've also got the hardwood sides so that when you're pulling the drawer in and out it doesn't get cockeyed 
it just makes it much easier to pull the drawer in and out. Now again, his plywood was already pre-cut a lot of it, so on the bed side, which would be the driver's side, or what I'm calling the left side in this video, you're gonna notice there's a little bit of a hole. So what I did there is we made that drawer bigger, way bigger than the drawer opening, to cover that up. That way if he wants to put a fire extinguisher or something right there handy towards the tailgate, he has that access hole right there and it'll be easy to get to. Again, that part of the build out was already pre-cut before we started, so it doesn't go all the way to the bed like the right hand side does when we custom build that side of the cabinet here. So we did take a little bit of time measuring out everything. And again, on the right hand side, it's built in three phases. We built the part over the wheel well, then the two ends, and then you'll see, again, same little tip on cutting out the hole, the access door for the hole where the door is gonna be on the right hand side. We put a frame on that and then router it out with the flush trim bit. Again, guys, that flush trim bit is a lifesaver when you're doing stuff like this and it just, it really cleans up your work and makes it look so much more professional when you're done than jagged edges. Cause you, not only are you getting a nice smooth squared up opening this way, the edges are cut just, I mean, finished smooth right off the router bit. You don't have to sand it or anything else. Now, again, on edges of plywood, I would go ahead and I would recommend doing the seal coat before you stain it. That's another thing that I do want to note in this video. Ty has already got the staining stuff purchased. He wants to take his camper build out back home and he's going to finish the stain himself. He's going to stain the bed frame and the cabinet, which is on the right hand side. And then I believe at the time we were making this video in the back of his mind, he's probably going to do like the bed liner type paint job on the actual bed top as well as that middle bed top, which would make that bed almost a full-size bed because he could put two of those 25 and a half inch mattresses on there as well. So him and his wife can camp in there much easier. Again, as we're wrapping up this video, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. This week when the video airs, me and some guys from the Oklahoma Longbow Association are gonna be down in far south Texas hunting javelina. So look for a video coming up if you enjoy the hunting videos. We should have a hunting javelina in south Texas video coming out shortly after this build. We're also gonna be doing a few more videos on the archery equipment we've added. A new, a new bow to our arch as well as we're going to be fixing up Angie's bow and making it more user friendly for a female. We've, put, we've got a lot of fun builds that we're going to be doing for the archery range as well as other outdoor activities. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd love to talk you into subscribing. Again, we do have a video up right now because OJAM will be coming up here shortly. And that video, if you're interested in learning how to make your own self bow, is already posted all the everything you need to know about making a self, a self bow everything you need to know about going to the event in Oklahoma we've got a video on it as well I'd like to encourage you to click over and watch that video again we appreciate your likes comments and subscribes and I hope each and every one of you have a blessed week thank you